Hello, Pastor Preston is my name. I want to quickly talk to you about um, sin. Okay? And um, of course, you know, if we want to really take all the time to explain everything about it, this video will be in parts. But I'll just talk to you in a brief and in the best way I think you'll be able to understand it and then knock the devil off you forever. Hallelujah. We're in God's body. So, uh, we'll be looking at a couple of scriptures by His grace, but I'd like you to pay attention and then don't listen to me religiously. Open your heart by the Spirit that you may be able to defeat this completely. Because the Lord said to me, He said, one of the greatest things that the devil uses against God's children today is the same mentality, is the same consciousness. He keeps them far from God. He makes them feel in fear, makes them feel like they can't do right. He, as a matter of fact, he even makes some people just come and say, well, I'm an unbeliever because I cannot do right. And when you meet a lot of Christians today, you see that they always get to, complain about this they're struggling with sin they have all of all this challenge in fact some people have, have had different notions some say well let's just be doing anyhow some say well um i can't do right some say okay let me be trying and keep trying and different thoughts here and there and then um they've been they, they can't really achieve right you know the truth is this a lot of people a lot of christians uh, really want to do right that's the truth we really love god we really don't want to sin but the funny thing or the painful thing about life is that sometimes we find ourselves being weak we cannot uh, we cannot know why we just get on the wrong things that we, we keep doing or the things that we consider to be seen and then we are all feeling like this whole problem how do i deal with it and then the devil begins to suggest to us and how to deal with it which are not in the righteousness of god and of course does not help us to achieve the will of god perfectly okay so i want to quickly talk to you as the lord has led in my heart and as many start to me of it uh, to share to you glory to god okay and i want you to really pay attention to it first what is sin you know there is what we call sin from the beginning and sin in the new testament which is a little bit different from sin in the old testament in the old testament sin is when you do wrong when you do anything outside of the Ten Commandments or the things that Moses had written to them, right? That is sin. Okay, but before the Old Testament, right, which is the New Testament, of course, you know, before the Old Testament, the Old Testament started with Moses, right? Um, and then uh, that started from um, Acts, uh, sorry, Exodus chapter number 19 towards the end into 2020 from fully and then it went on. Okay, and then, of course, you also know before that time, there was no Old Testament. Okay, that was um that you could even call the new testament amen okay and then we have um after the resurrection of christ we also have in all full times the new testament because in Hebrews it tells us there will be no testator until the test uh, there will be no testament until the testator dies glory to god so the new testament god valid uh, god val uh, validity when jesus um rose from the dead glory to god okay so what's seen from the new I've just told you from the old, right? Sin primarily from the old, from the New Testament is disobedience to God. Disobedience to God. That's true. A lot of time we hear too many things about the, 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 the crime Adam committed in the garden. People are quick to tell you Adam ate an apple, you know, and all that stuff. And today we're still eating apple. If Adam ate an apple, really, I, I don't think uh, human beings would have been eating apple today. Okay, well, uh, 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 we, we don't really investigate scriptures to find it in real terms, right? Every time the disciples referred to the sin that Adam committed, they had a proper expression to that. So let's see in the Bible to know because that's where sin started from glory to god you need to to see where he started to um you know understand how it works now hallelujah so if you read um romans chapter number five right romans chapter number five if you read from verse number 16 it says and not as i was by one that sinned so is the gift for the judgment was by one to condemnation but the free gift is of many many offenses unto justification 17 for if by one man's offense death reign by one man's offense death reign by one then it says much more they which receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one jesus christ so in other words if we all became sinners by adam then we can all become righteous by christ second corinthians chapter number five verse number 21 tells us straightly that will be made the righteousness of god in christ jesus glory to god somebody i make reference to that as we go on in the conversation okay 18 now says therefore as by one by the offense of one one judgment 
came unto all men to condemnation. Even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. 19 now gives us specifically. Look at it. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So sin started from disobedience. Today, when we hear the voice of God over a thing, and then we go the opposite, we are done wrong. Okay, by one man's disobedience, uh, uh, it says, uh, many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. That's Jesus. By, by the obedience of Jesus, many were made righteous. Glory to God. But look at 20 and 21. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. It says the law entered that the offense might abound, but, but where, that, that the offense might abound, but where sin, but where sin abounded, Grace did much more abound. So when things are going wrong more, right, grace is showing up more. Think about this. I wanted to grab this very quickly. If you give birth to a child and then you find out that your child, the one you gave birth to that you love, right, is beginning to mess up so much and you have a good heart, what do you do? You want to find a way to solve the problem for him. You see? Except your wicked father who says, well, it's mess. I'm going to disown them. You, you know, a lot of time, uh, when we deal with the issue of sin, we, we always don't relate with this that God is our father and we are his son. We always relate with it like we are some kind of strangers. We think like we walk in a company when we just do wrong the fire hours. We don't look at the fact that he's our father who loves us more than our biological parents can even do. Right? And then put us in the inclusion. That's why it says, when sin much more abound, grace much more abounds. Because God loves you and he always wants us. God is not excited to get rid of us. He doesn't want to get rid of us. He wants to have us together. That's why the biggest, the greatest commission he gives, right? It says, go teach all men, bring them back. Second Corinthians says, go reconcile all men back. If God does not love us, he will not preach for that. You know, today we, we, we practice Christianity like God has sent us to go condemn the world. Even in John chapter number three, it says, Jesus did not come into the world to condemn sinners. He didn't come to condemn sinners. You need to get it right. If you read from 15, 16, and 17, you get the old picture clear. So he didn't bring Jesus to condemn sinners, but to bring them unto himself. So he gave us the very easiest way to approach it. And he says, just believe. If Look at it. In John 3, 16, For God to love the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And now a lot of people say, well, you can you can become a Christian, right? And then you are not sure of your salvation. Think about the statement. Whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Whosoever believes in him. How so how then can we still believe in him and perish? You see? So we in a sentiment or that wrong rightness mentality, we just want to feel like, oh well. Now notice, he didn't say he didn't say whoever do, does right or, do, or does wrong. He didn't say well, whoever begins to do wrong, we lose eternal life. Uh, whoever does right, we continue to gain eternal life. It just says whoever believes in him should not perish, should not perish. So how do we intend to perish when we still believe in him? So how do we perish then when we stop to believe in him? Well, we stop to believe in him. You see that? But I understand when you begin to derive belief, belief causes us to love and love causes us to act. So when we believe someone, we do what they say. So Jesus says, if you love me, you do my commandment. That's why he, told, that's why he tells them in John 14. If you love me, you, you, you keep my commandment. Now, he's not saying uh, 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 because anybody can keep his commandment when he doesn't love him. But he says the love of God in you works in you to keep his commandment. So you cannot say you love God and not keep his commandment. So watch this. It says, when sin abound, great much more abound. As a matter of fact, this did not go well with the people. You see that in, 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 in uh, what's it called, in Romans 6, when they began to ask the question. 21, and it says, that as sin had reigned unto death, even so my grace reigned true righteousness unto eternal life by one Jesus Christ. Notice, it didn't say grace will just reign into eternal life. It says it will reign true righteousness. So, if grace is not producing righteousness in you, it will not reign into eternal life. And of course, the righteousness being produced in you is not of work, it's of gift. 
but that gift now produces a work of righteousness in us not we walking righteousness to end the gift Ephesians chapter number 2 right if you read it in verse number 8 it says salvation is a free gift it says that no man may boast so our salvation of God our righteousness is a gift from God that we will not boast and I quoted that earlier 2 Corinthians 5 21 it was a gift from God to us so we can't boast of it that's why nobody is more righteous than the other but we now begin to work in that righteousness the righteousness that ministers in us hallelujah because Christianity is a lack of a spirit within us so every of the right things we do is a product of that 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 spirit in us that's speaking through us or talking to us to do right that's why when you train yourself in the word of god you begin to program your spirit you begin to educate your spirit so you can understand when the holy spirit is talking right and then function from within and do right glory to god somebody so that's it from here and then in romans 6 1 that i asked shall we continue to see that grace be about what do you mean you're talking about that uh, grace the more, more much more grace abounds uh, 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 the more sin abounds grace much more abounds so they now say shall we continue seeing that grace grace may abound now the question is some people want to begin to say a lot of stuff shall we continue seeing that grace may abound yes continue seeing that grace may abound i know you didn't like what i just said but you see it's not my word i just read to you again in another way Romans chapter number 5 verse number 20 moreover the law entered that offense may ab might abound so the law did not solve offense he says he says the law increased sin then he says but where sin abounded grace much more abound so when he asked Paul the question they actually asked him a question that he has answered so Paul did not answer the question in verse number 2 like he taught no Paul began to explain to them, right, how to deal with sin, but not answering the question, because the more we sin, grace is going to continue to go on. Yes, that's what I just read to you. Read it again by yourself. So what did Paul now say in verse number two? Paul now says, how shall we continue in sin that grace, uh, how shall we continue in sin, uh, uh, continue in sin, we who are dead to sin? You see, we are dead to sin, so we can't live any longer in sin. But how come a believer continues to live in sin i'll show you then we'll come into john chapter number one first john chapter number one and we'll read from verse number five glory to god somebody this then is the message which we have received of him and declared unto you that god is light and in him and in him is no darkness at all he says god is light so the reason a Christian commits sin or does wrong is because first it was program of his flesh in sin. He'd been, he's been living with sin and he's used to sin. Now he's born again. His spirit is righteous, but he needs to take in the word of God like, like the scripture says in Ephesians chapter number 4, right, 17 to 20, where it says that you should learn Christ. Okay, so he needs to begin to learn the word of God, which is Christ, so that he can begin to understand what righteousness is dispensing from within, right and then cooperate with it that's it not we doing it it is the righteousness of god that's working from within us all we do is to understand how it works according to we who have looked on the word of god and cooperate by it you see so how will all this happen watch this so he says look at this in god is light and in him is no darkness six he now says if we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness we lie and do not the truth so in other words what do we do when we fellowship with god the word fellowship there is what colonia and i'll show you what colonia shows up in the greek he has a lot of words glory to god he says partnership uh partnership participation intercourse benefit benef benefit uh, 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 benefaction communication communion distribution fellowship i like another word here that the tears uh definition uh, puts it he says fellowship association community communion right joint pa uh, participation intercourse all this is one uh, uh, all the synonyms for uh, uh uh fellowship so when we are in fellowship with god he says we can walk in darkness so now how do we become in fellowship with god don't forget god is his word one that's number one number two also a christian who is manifesting his word who is maturing in the word of god is god too because he has grown in god so when we fellowship with the word of god when we fellowship with believers who are growing in the word 
Right? That's why you see one of the words there as community. When we create a community of saints around us, right, we will just begin to find us developing the things of God and then get better. Glory to God, somebody. You see that? It says, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance for the sense. I commend you to God and to the, and to the knowledge of the word, which is able to build you up. So the word of God can build us up. We also understand that when we pray in the spirit too, we can be built up. Jude chapter number one, verse number 20, right? It says, it's, it's, uh, uh, building up yourself in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. So when we give into the word, when we pray in the Holy Spirit, we get to build ourselves up in the righteousness of God. Glory to God, somebody. This is very good. Okay? So if we work, if we are in fellowship with God, truly in com communion, Cononia, if we are talking all the time with God, if we are talking with the right people, when I mean the right people, I'm not saying people who are just right by, by moral character. I'm saying people who are right by scriptures, people who talk scriptures, people who believe scriptures. If those are the kind of people we interact with all the time, we can never work in darkness. That's what the scripture says. Then seven now says, but if we work in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one another. So glory to God, hallelujah. So he says, if you are walking in the light, then there is a proof that you are fellowshipping with someone in the light. So even if you think you're fellowshipping with someone with the light and there is no light coming out of the light, you are not fellowshipping with that individual. What do you mean? Judas was with Jesus, but he wasn't fellowshipping with Jesus. If he was fellowshipping with Jesus, most likely he would not have done what he did. So that right people are present with you is good, but it's not great until you begin to talk to them and take the truth that they receive, agree with it, and then meditate upon it. Naturally, you just begin to find light just come out of your life. You see, Pastor Preston, you're talking about sin. How does this concern sin? Yeah, you're going to see it because it's going progressively and it's in the context. Hallelujah. Then he goes on to say that, uh, I read seven again. But if you work in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. You know, Lord Paul is quoting the blood, the blood, when you're trying to get into trouble. Oh, I caught, I played the blood, I played the blood. I'm just thinking, if you want to plead the blood, you should plead the blood for your sin. Hallelujah. But watch this. It says, the blood of Jesus cleanses us from our sin. So, so what, what, what does this mean? Are you trying to say we should be pleading the blood? No, he never tells us to do that. Now, in the Old Testament, when they do wrong, they come, they, maybe they bring a goat, right, or some stuff. They bring it to the chief priest. The chief priest will cut that thing, take the blood into the holies of the holies and present it before God. Then the sinner stays back. The sinner does not enter into the courtroom. He stays back. It's only the chief priest who goes in, right? It's only the priest who goes in to present that sacrifice for their sin. Okay? And that blood now does something, covers their sin. Psalm 51, David makes us to understand when he talks about, pardon me with ISO and I'll be clean. And this says, covers my sin. Okay? So in the Old Testament, please pay attention. In the Old Testament, their sins were covered. In the New Testament, our sins were wiped out. And then when we do wrong, please pay attention. When we do wrong, glory to God, right? First, we are called of the light that walketh in us to say, hey, this is wrong. And then he says, I'm sorry, Lord. Right? And then, watch this, watch this, that blood that Jesus, you know when Jesus died and someone wanted to go grab Jesus out and then you say, hey, stop that, don't touch me. I've not, I've not yet seen my father. Right? So, you know, there are two, in the races, there are two ascension actually. When Jesus died, rose from the dead, he went to the father. Right? Immediately he came out, he went to the father, presented his blood for, for his blood to which he had died and canceled sin to his father. Now, what did he, what was that blood doing with God? First, every time he sees the blood, you know, in the Old Testament, when he told them, he says, put the blood on the, on the words, on the, on the gates of the house. He says, when I see the blood, I'll pass over. Right? Don't forget, I'm uncovering that to you now into the New Testament. So every time God sees the blood of Christ, he never remembers and understands your sin. So that's why he gave, he went to put that blood there. Okay. So he came back. And then, of course, he ascended again while he was teaching them. So there were two ascension. Glory to God, somebody. Please pay attention. Don't listen to me religiously because this will not make sense to you. Hallelujah. Because a lot of people are preaching sin and preaching sin and preaching sin. And even the people preaching sin are committing sin. 
I didn't realize. So what, what do I say then? You're preaching people to stop to do sin because you really love God. Because you don't really want to, you don't really want to sin too. Because you cannot be preaching sin and be sinning, except you're an hypocrite. But if you're preaching sin and you are sinning, not because you're an hypocrite, but because you can help yourself, you are working under the Old Testament. And under that, he says, by, by strength shall no man prevail. You can prevail. You can do right of strength. And all the right that you do of strength, it is the right of training, programming of a long time. So that you can do this and someone cannot do it. Don't feel too excited with yourself. He just means you were ra rightly raised up. He was not rightly raised up. And we understand that what we're used to for a long time is something that just works naturally out of us. So that I, that I don't do this and then he does that, does not make me begin to feel like, well, I'm better than you, brother. Can you see? What's wrong with you? See that? No, 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 no. You you were just uh, structurally put right. If you were him who were raised from the wrong place where they were sinning and doing all of all that stuff, you may just be him and he would have just been you. So don't boast of strength. In First Corinthians chapter number 1, he says, I think 29, he says that strength may not, may not glory in my presence. So Christianity is not of strength. It is the ministration of righteousness. It is the allowing God to walk through you. He said, it is God who walketh in us to do unto will of his good will. And then we also saw uh, in 2 Corinthians when he says, it is God walketh in, walking in Christ, right? It is God walking in Christ, please pay attention, walking in Christ, reconciling the world to himself. So in the New Testament, it is not us doing anything. We are just cooperating with what God is doing. Align the ministration of God through us. Glory to God. And this is everything for sin. That's why it says, if you fellowship with me, you cannot have, you cannot walk in darkness. It is when well, you try to not do wrong things. No, it says, just fellowship with me. Talk to me all the time. Listen to me. Do what I tell you. And you can. And for every time he tells you to do a thing, don't even try to want to do it of your strength. Just do it because it's still going to be of his strength. But when you try to, when you take his instruction and try to do it of strength, you're going to fail. And if you did not fail and you got it right, you have gotten it right of work, which perishes. Oh, now maybe this is too deep. You have gotten it right of work, which will not end anything in eternity. Because in Christianity, it's about how much of God that you allow and not how much of work that, uh, that you, you, you do, because every time we do it of work, we are quick to boast about it, and that now begins to walk pride, and it says, God resists the proud and gives more grace to the humble. But Pastor Prince, I do the work, and I say, oh God, take all the glory. Sometimes you're lying. You know, you might just be saying, oh yeah, it was the glory of God, but your mind, your real mind, if we twist you in a little way, and all that, you'll be shocked, and you say, yeah, I did it, yeah, I did it. You'll be shocked, because every time, anything you do of strength, strength takes the glory. But everything you do of the spirit, the spirit takes the glory. Hallelujah. So let's go on and not miss it. So it says, the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all our sin. Then it comes into it. It says, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. While I was a little bit younger Christian, I thought this was in the past tense. When we're not Christians, when we're not Christians, so he was dealing with all this expression. Okay, because I didn't get a proper understanding of this, but as I began to mature, right, the Holy Spirit opened my eyes to this, and then He showed me what this really meant. So today He brought my mind back again and says, "I want you to share on it, right? This is not in past tense; this is in present tense. But the danger with this will now be if this is in present tense, then this is contradicting First John chapter number three, verse number nine, because First John three says, "He that is born of God cannot sin." It says, because his seed liveth in him, or abideth in him. So how can the one who is born of God, and we know we are all born of God. So how you say that guy cannot say, and then you are saying, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not found, and the truth is not in us. And then now complicated the issue. So now it says, if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That complicates the issue. So you just say, well, that means Christians will always sin. So some people just claim that. So, well, we just come to sin. So if we sin, just confess it, blah, blah, and God will forgive us. Okay, let me come back and show you a proper expression. I go back again to it. Okay, let me start from self. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and truth is not found in us. What is he trying to say? If we say we don't do wrong stuff, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not found in us. Now, wrong 
is not necessarily sin. It could be a product of, of your not being mature enough. Okay, let me say, let me explain this to you. Someone can do wrong because he doesn't know what is right or because he's weak to do right and then because he deliberately wants to do wrong. There are three different things. The guy who deliberately wants to do wrong does not know God. You can know God of the Spirit and deliberately want to do wrong. You only will do wrong as a product of the fact that you don't know what is right or you are weak, haven't been carnal or stayed with the wrong people or fellowship with your, with your strongholds, right? Which is against the knowledge of God and that's why you just find yourself naturally doing wrong or enjoying to do wrong. I hope this is making sense. So I read that to you on the TPT. Eight on the TPT. And I want you to see what he says on the TPT. Glory to God. It says, if we boast that we have no sin, we are only fooling ourselves and are strangers to the truth. So if we brag that we don't do anything wrong. So I'll show you next, next verse here. It says, but if we freely admit sins, I would like to put that as admit wrong, when his light uncovers them. Please take note of the way. It makes it conditional. When his light uncovers them, he will be faithful to forgive us everything. It says God is just to forgive us our sins because of Christ and he will continue to cleanse from all unrighteousness. Glory to God. Okay. Come back to the King James. And I want to show you something with the King James. So I, I come into, glory to God. I come into a thing. The word here is the word confess on the Greek is the word homologia. And I did a, a, some kind of research and I discovered that, discovered that we had homologia and then we have, I think, I think something like caruso. And, 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 and the two of them means confess. But, but, but the, 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 the other Greek says, um, to say what you have done wrong. Homologia, on the opposite, does not speak like that. Homologia says, to speak in ascent. I'll read it to you. It says, to, to speak in ascent. To speak in ascent. That means, say according to how he has said. When we hear what God has said, we say what he said. Good, good. Look at it. So it says, if we confess our sin, what is he saying then? I'll show you. He said, if we speak what God has said concerning sin, boy, he's faithful and just to help us above sin. Does that make sense? I will explain that. What has God said concerning sin? You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You are not a sinner. You're born in Christ. He looks at the blood and forget, forgets all your sin. In 1 John chapter number 2, let me show you this. He begins to talk to children there. He says, maybe I should open it. 1 John chapter number 2 from verse number 1. So you can see this properly. So you don't say the person is just trying to give us some assumed talk. No. My little children, these things write I unto you, that ye sin not. He tells little children to, to not sin because little children are bound to do wrong. Because they are still mastering the acts and the character of God. So they can do wrong. So he tells them don't do wrong. Even though you are still learning God. Then he now says, and if any man sin. So he knows. He says, if any man. Now he uses the word any man and not little children here. Because primarily in context he saying if little children sin. But even those who are not little children too can sin. That's why he used the word any man. So, little children or not little children. Watch this. He doesn't say, if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. Jesus Christ the righteous, who is the advocate with the Father, is the blood of atonement. Does that make sense? It's the blood. So, so Jesus Christ, I would have said, Jesus, 
So, you know, a lot of people begin to tell you, it's not about every time that you do wrong, Jesus is begging God to forgive you for your sin. No, it's not begging God. For every time that you do wrong, that, that Jesus Christ, the righteous, which was spilled off in his blood, because in the temple, they usually will spill out blood of animals, which always will, will, will cover the sin. In the New Testament, our sins are no longer covered. Our sins was dealt with once and for all. And that blood stands with God. So every time that you do wrong, that he wants to lash on you for having done wrong, he sees the blood, and then that blood makes him forget your sin. Okay, but what if that action could be destructive? What if that action could uh, mess you up? What if that action needs some apology? Maybe you need to apologize to someone, or maybe you need to, you know, uh, just uh, say some stuff to get healed. Remember in James, it says, uh, 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 you know, when it's talking about if, 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 if a brother offends, right? It says, uh, and then that issue, then it says, call, tell, confess your fault. Uh, one to another that he might be healed okay now so what if all that stuff that's what it begins to show you in fact when it says the light will reveal it in the in the uh the tpt it says the light will show you so sometimes you're just going and the Holy Spirit says oh you've just done something wrong oh lord i'm sorry i'm sorry for doing that right and then we receive forgiveness because in the new testament watch this in the old testament we pray for forgiveness in the new testament we, we receive forgiveness because we have been forgiven so every time we do wrong oh i'm sorry and when we receive forgiveness and then we move on Move on in the light of God. Someone will now say, ah, that means we just continue to commit sin then. No, you will not continue to commit sin. The reason why you think you just come to commit sin is because you're reasoning that scripture from the flesh. Because of the spirit, you are dead to sin. You are fellowshipping with light. And walking with the light of God, they cannot produce darkness out of you. So no Christian who walks in the light enjoys to do wrong or likes to or continues to do wrong. It is not possible because he is dead to sin. Hmm, I pray this is making sense. So, watch this closely. Then it says, and, uh, and then it says, uh, we have uh, the advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the proprietor for our sin, and not for us only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Glory to God. So even unbelievers, if they can realize this quickly and grab Jesus, the sins are cleared off. Ooh. So, in the New Testament, sin is not a problem. Jesus dealt with sin. So, stop stressing sin. Stop telling people, don't wear this, don't wear that. Oh, don't do like this, don't do like that. Give them Christ. When you give them Christ, they will know moderation is needful. When you give them Christ, when they are active, activated, when they are on fire for Jesus, they will be, they will be straightened from, from the within. So, listen here, the more you preach that they should not do wrong, the more they do wrong. Because when you preach wrong, you declare wrong to their life. But when you preach righteousness, you declare righteousness to their life. So stop preaching wrong. Stop preaching sin. Declare righteousness to them. So it tells us, when it says confess our sin, it's not saying say the things that you do wrong. I want to say this to you. All the people who always confess their sins are always confessing their sin. Those who go to Reverend Father's every Sunday to confess what they have done wrong, they'll still continue to come. Apology is no repentance. And when you keep apologizing, right, you, you, you cry because look here, but Bible says, you shall have whatsoever you see. Did you ever find that in the Bible? You shall have whatsoever you see. So, and then the Bible also told us not to speak the wrong things. Right? We also, it shows us what to think about. He never tells us, well, think about your sin so you can feel really sorry about it. He didn't say anything about that. So, as a matter of fact, when you do wrong, never think about it. Forget it quickly. Pastor, it's not possible. By getting yourself engaged with some right stuff and not thinking about them. Because the more you think about them, thinking you want to think to feel bad not to do them, is the more you will do them. Hear me today. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. So, then it says in the other verse, it says, he that is born of God. Let's look at it. So, I quoted, I quoted to you earlier on, but I want us to see, right? 3 verse number 9, right? Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. Okay, let's look at from uh, even 7. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. Now, take the even as he is righteous. So everyone born of the New Testament is righteous. Then it says, do, it, do righteousness so you should be righteous. No, little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous. Even as he's righteous. 
He did not say he that does not do righteousness is unrighteous. The next verse explains something close to that. He that committed sin is of the devil. You see that? Look, look here. It says, for the devil sinned from the beginning for his purpose for, for this purpose, the Son of God was made manifest that he might destroy the works of sin. So look at it. He that committed sin is of the devil. So you know what it says? Every time you commit sin, it is an influence of the devil. Because God's spirit will not lead you to sin. And the devil never stops talking to us. He even spoke to Jesus when Jesus was done fasting. So when he says, any that committed sin is of the devil, he's saying that the action comes from the devil. So those who enjoy to do wrong or who enjoy to commit sin, they are always listening to the devil. And when you want to look at sin, please don't keep one thing in mind as sin. Sin is many. When we do things against the will of God, when the Lord says, don't be angry about this thing, you are angry about it, you are committing sin. When the Lord says, sit down and you walk away, you are committing sin. So don't put sin to only, uh, he stole, he committed fornication, uh, he killed somebody. No, no, no. All that at the fruit of unrighteousness. Did you not see when they explained in Genesis chapter number five? He tells us that the fruit of righteousness, they are not sin. Sin is disobedience to God, going against the will of God. When the Lord tells you to preach and you didn't, you didn't preach, you, you're here, you're committed, you're done wrong. This is deep, right? That's why he tells you, uh, by strength, nobody can get it right. Amen. Okay? So watch this. Then it says, that he, he that committed sin is of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning. Uh, beginning. Now this would have been scary if he did not add the B part. He said, for this purpose, glory to God, the Son of God was made manifest that he might destroy what? The works. Now he didn't say that he might destroy sin. The Son of God was made manifest. Hold on. Hold on. He didn't say the Son of God. Now, the Son of God was made manifest to destroy the works of sin. The Son of God died to pay for sin. So there's a difference between paying for sin and destroying the works of sin. Sin has been paid for, but his works are still here today. So once you agree with the Son of God who lives in you, the works of sin is destroyed in your life. You cannot listen to the devil to commit sin. Glory to God. So this is not fearful. This is a thing of joy. Exciting. So it comes into nine. It's consistent. It's it, it, it's contextual. It comes into nine and I say, whosoever, anybody who is born of God, doth not commit sin for his seed. I can say my son is an animal because my seed is in him. So even if he behaves like an animal, it will be for just a while. As he begins to master to learn me, he will begin to behave like me. So I destiny is God. We have been programming God unto righteousness. As we begin to learn God, we end up manifesting exactly like God. Even when we do all the little wrong stuff today, he's a product of the fact that we are not learning him well or fast, or we are getting distracted. We are paying attention to stupid things. So if my son is behaving like an animal, what do I do? I, I begin to look at what he's looking at. He's, he's been looking at too many animals. That's why he's acting like animals. If I make sure he lives looking at animals and look at me, he will behave like me. That's why Hebrews tells you, looking unto Jesus, the author, the starter and the finisher of a faith. You know, faith works against sin. So it's the starter and the finisher of your righteousness that can also pass. So all you know, when you see somebody just keeps doing wrong, just take their eyes away from the wrong. Fix them with Christ. If they are born again, they will naturally begin to act Christ. If they are not, that means you have taken their eyes away, but they have still kept the memory in their head. Because that you are not looking at it does not mean you are not looking at it in your mind. Glory. Say, does, does not sin, for his seed remained in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. You see, he cannot sin because he's born of God. So when he says confess it, what was he talking about? Declare what God says about you. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. My sins have been blotted. I've been, I've been cleansed off. I'm not a sinner. I'm the righteousness of God. I've been made righteous. And then you fellowship with him and you confess it. You confess it. When you speak what God says, confess what he says. Right? You just find that your character. So when he says we forgive you of the sin. He's talking about that he will 
That, that's why he used the word, cleanse you of your sin. So the word of God cleanses us of our sin. What do you mean to that? I'll give you proof to that. Jesus says, the word that I speak unto you, right? It says, the word that I speak cleanses you of your wrong, right? He calls it a cleansing agent. This one that I say unto you, uh, John chapter number, let me, let me give you exactly, John chapter number uh, 15, verse number 3. Hallelujah, glory, 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 glory. Are you feeling excited? This, because we're dealing with this once and forever, and then the devil is not excited, you're hearing it because he wants to hold you captive with that uh, 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 orientation of sinning until you don't, uh, you don't live the right way that you ought to live and be excited and enjoy your life as believers in Christ. Otherwise, the dying of Jesus was in vain. If, watch it, watch this. If there could not be a different, uh, uh, different power to work right in the New Testament, then why did Jesus come to die? If we will subject ourselves to all those of the Old Testament, if we want to get it right like they did, what was his dying then? Think. Now you are cleansed through the word which I have spoken unto you. You are cleansed. So he calls the word a cleansing agent. When we speak the word, he cleanses us. So when we're doing the wrong stuff, or we find ourselves falling victim for the wrong stuff, begin to declare the right stuff. And that right stuff will clean you of that wrong stuff that has, has prevailed in your heart or in your mind and kept you to keep doing wrong. Declare it and don't give up. Pray in the spirit, right? All the time until you find that power over it. Because a believer, the Bible says, has been dead to sin and can no longer live therein. Glory to God. This is deep. See? This is deep. And I hope it's making sense to you. So, sin has been dealt with. You're righteous. Think about it. Think about it. So, let me show you this. You know, if you have, there's something called root cause analysis. If you have a tree in your house, and a tree has having a branch that is uh, coming into your window, it's trying to mess up your house, you could choose to cut that branch, and then you'd be excited. Maybe like for some few weeks or few months. Afterwards, another branch comes up again, and then going. Then they talk to you in root cause analysis. They say, okay, well, all you just need to do is uproot the tree. If you take out the tree, you're very sure that you are safe forever. So all the time they covered sin, <laughs> they still have ability to sin because it had not been dealt with from the root. So Jesus came and dealt with it from the root. He took away the tree of sin away. Took it away. So we can make reference to sin. So all of the actions of sin is the deceit of the devil. That's why it says, he that committed sin is of the devil. He's paying attention to the devil. So that's why Paul took to the Colossians and said, set your minds on the things that are above where Christ is seated. Number one. Romans chapter number eight. That's why it tells you to be carnally minded. Is there. Because once you give your mind to natural things of life, it says you, you just walk by the deadness. You can walk as light. It's a mentality. And what forms our mentality? What we pay attention to. Pastor Brother, what about the ones that were built over time? Give it to the word of God. Superimpose it with the word. Right? Demolish it by the kratos of God. By the power of God. Demolish it. For your future sake. So sin has no power over you anymore. The Bible says that. Sin has no power over you. Doesn't have. Jesus now leaves in you the righteous God. No true Christian enjoys to commit sin. If you enjoy to commit sin, or you enjoy to do the wrong stuff, you have not fellowship with light. You have been fellowshipping with darkness. So you need to change all the set of people who you pay attention to and begin to pay attention or fellowship with the right set of people and with the word of God. And don't read the word of God with the mindset. Read the word of God how it just exactly it is. And you see that your Christian work will work beautifully well. Hallelujah. Glory to God somebody. I really hope I was able to hit this. I told you it wasn't a brief, so we're not going to do so much extension on that. Jesus, remember, I told you from the root cause, has taken away everything, right? Because when he died for us, he didn't cover our sin. He took, he killed sin for us. So we are no longer alive to sin. We're now alive to godliness. Glory to God somebody. And we're righteous. Say it now as you hear me. It's the righteousness of God. And believe that we're in fellowship with the right people, fellowship with the, with, with the word of God, fellowship with, with, with Jesus in your your life will just produce life naturally. Thank you for listening to me. And I hope this will bless you and bring you a lot of blessing. In Jesus' name, amen.